Hello guys, welcome to another episode with your boy Franklin. Right, if this is your first time, thank you for stopping by. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for supporting my channel. Thank you for loving my content and watching them and sharing them, okay? If you like this content, don't forget to give me that thumb up and um, also be sure to share my content with your friends and families, okay? Now, so there is a white paper um, basically, this is about um, the UK's um, immigration plans post Brexit. I'm, you know, I'm guessing if you're watching this, you have an idea what Brexit is and stuff. You know, I found this document. Please make sure you go into the description below. To um, I'm going to put a link in there to go and read this document. If you are planning to come to the UK, <coughs> excuse me. Um, in terms of you know looking for employment and hoping to come here to work it's vital that you go and read the document if you're a prospective student that's planning on coming to the uk it's very very important that you go and read this document if you are already a, an international student in the system and you're not aware of this white paper which sets out post brexit immigration rules it's very important that you go read and if you have any member of your family your friends and staff who are planning on coming to the uk or who are given a consideration it's very important the premise of this video right as i say is to say it like it is is to share information if i can successfully help at least one person i think i've done a fantastic job in terms of my existence as a human being who is on this platform called YouTube, okay? The implementation period, right, uh, I think runs till December 2020. So what that means is the current immigration rules will run up until December 2020. After December 2020, this new, newly proposed rules will kick in into full force, right? So I'm gonna talk about workers, because some of you have been sending me emails, and I've had several emails from people who are contemplating on coming to the UK uh, to work as nurses, as um, carers, as you know, doctors and stuff like that. These are fantastic, you know, being a doctor, being a nurse and stuff, looking for a better prospect. It's an amazing thing, it's a beautiful thing, but the truth has got to be told, you know, it's very important that you get information, you educate yourself. I cannot stress this enough. In fact, I digress. Before I proceed with this, let me say quickly, if you're watching this, you know, there are two types of people when it comes to um, people from, particularly from Africa, wanting to go overseas. You know, some people, depending on your background, your family, your financial status and all that stuff, you might be able to navigate this, you know, usually known uh, to be complex process of um, applying for visas and all that stuff, even if it's student visa or you're trying to get a work visa and stuff like that. Some people, they try, they try to do it themselves and, and in the end, they get fantastic outcome. Some, they use travel agents. Now, there is absolutely no crime in using a travel agent. The fundamental problem is you have unscrupulous travel agents and one of the, this is my own observation, one of the major problems that our people face is, you see, when you want to travel abroad and then you hire a travel agent in, say, in Nigeria or in Ghana, whatever country you are in, what tends to happen is people just pay them money, the travel agent asks you for go and bring me A, B, C, D, E, F, G documents, da 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 da, they do whatever they, they need to do and you just go to the embassy if you're lucky enough, you get the visa and you come. So what happens is a lot of people jump on the plane clueless and some of these travel agents themselves are clueless because they're unscrupulous, a lot of them, they laser target, they focus on the money they want to get from you, once they get the money, they don't bloody care what happens onto the next client, which is an it's, it's basically a vicious cycle that gets and again it, you can't use that as an excuse this is why i said in my previous video ignorance is not an excuse this is why i'm sort of preaching and saying listen educate yourself one of the best things you can do for yourself is to invest in yourself it's one thing to pay somebody for a service trying to help you get a visa and stuff that's great but you also have a duty of care towards yourself to get knowledge, to get accustomed to the information about where you're going and stuff and research. Google is your friend. There are tons and tons of information. There is YouTube. There are so many resources online. Even if you go to the UK Border Force or the website of the respective you know, country you're going to, believe me, you will find 
tons of information. The problem is people don't bother. And one of the most infuriating things that I hear is people applying religious beliefs. This is why I keep saying I have a huge amount of respect for whatever religious inclination you have. But trust me, this has nothing to do with no Jesus, no Allah, no Muhammad, nothing. This is about set of information, immigration rules of country A, country B, country C. That's me done with a bit of a rant. I hope you find that helpful. Now, um, as I was saying, the white paper sets out, you know, post-Brexit immigration rules. I'm not, uh, it's impossible for me. It's uh, hundreds of pages, right? I'm going to put a link in, uh, in the description below. So, first of all, the border immigration and citizenship system currently costs 2.8 billion a year to run, including asylum and enforcement costs. And watch this. We raise 2.3 billion a year in visa and passport fees. Income generation through fees and charges will continue to underpin our future system, contributing significantly towards funding. This is what I, I said in previous video. This thing is a major business. Look at how much money they raise every over 2.3 billion. So the, the government just pretty much just prop that amount up to meet their cost and stuff. They make a ton of money. This is why I'm saying that for, for the UK, it's about business. It's about their interest. It's about what they want to gain. They don't really care about uh, you as a person, uh, the prospect of your life. If they allow you in into the system, it's what are we going to suck? How are we going to squeeze the juice out of this person in terms of talent, in terms of skills, in terms of your mental capability? They use you when they're done using you, they chew you, they spit you out onto the next. That's how the process works. Now, in addition to fees, certain migrants and their employers pay an immigration skills charge, an immigration health surcharge. Um, since the health surcharge was introduced in 2015, it has raised approximately 600 million for the National Health Services, otherwise known as the NHS. So this is why I'm telling you that it's about catering for their own system. So you can't exactly condemn them because it's their country. They do it their own way. Now, without further ado, they're talking about new immigration control. I'm going to read you a few things, okay? And then I'll crack on, particularly talk about the workers and students. Um, our new digital check-in service already being piloted for non-EU nationals, that's Africans, watch this, um, makes it easier for employers, landlords, public service providers to confirm an individual's rights and eligibility based on immigration you know, status. This is simpler, more secure, and more up-to-date than checking a variety of documents. As part of our new and end-to-end -end system, the individual immigration status will be compare, compared with exit checks, data monitoring departures from the UK, allowing an individual's date of exit to be recorded. And if it exceeds the duration of their permitted stay, that, that can be taken into account when they next apply to travel to the UK. They will help inform the appropriate enforcement action to take um, against those who flout immigration rules, uh, immigration laws and rules and refuse to comply. Now, let me just break that down very quickly. You see, for those of you that like to, you think once you get visa, you get in, you do as you wish. Now, what they're saying in a nutshell is there's going to be a lot more sophisticated you know, end-to-end -end system in place, whereby if you're saying you're coming here for X number of time, maybe four weeks, five weeks, two months, or whatever, however long, and you exceed that stay, do bear in mind, if you have the intention of hopefully renewing your visa in the near future so that you can come back, if you flout their immigration rules, what they are saying, because these people don't muck about, is they're going to have a much more robust and sophisticated system that would document your behavioral pattern. So if they look at your last trip and they see that you exceed your state, they can use that as a ground to refuse your visa. And I'm sure in extreme cases, they can ban you outrightly from coming. Bear that in mind. If you already have visas or you're going to get visas in future, be sure if you say you're coming here for two months, only, only if... There are extenuating circumstances. Say, for example, I'm talking hypothetically, that you were involved in a car accident, you became very ill, you were hospitalized. Let's say you were meant to be here for two months. You were on, on the sick bed. There are medical evidences, you know, records to back that up. Of course, of course, you know, that's a totally different conversation. But for you 
to just blatantly, sh you know, show a disregard for the rules, just be flagrant, oh, nothing is going to happen. Our people do that a lot. If you take it for granted, it's going to come full circle and bite you in the bone. Bear that in mind. Right. So, uh, da, 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 let's go. Now, some of the changes about workers, right? Because, I, like I said, I got several emails from people saying to me they want to come to the UK to work as nurses and doctors and, uh, and um, carers and whatnot, right? Bear this in mind. At present, we have a dual system of admitting only highly skilled workers from outside the EU and workers of all levels from the EU. We will replace this with a single route or route, whichever works for you, which gives access to highly skilled and skilled workers from all countries. Those coming to the UK on this route will need an employer to sponsor them, right? We propose to allow individuals to meet the requirements to bring uh, dependents, extend their stay and switch their, to other routes and in cases settle permanently. But check this though, check this, right? They are talking about you coming and stuff, right? There's something. Now, the new skilled route for workers, right, will include workers with in intermediate level skills and all that stuff. But here's the thing. They are recommending retaining the minimum salary threshold at £30,000. And we will engage businesses and employers as to what salary threshold should we set. They're basically contemplating on setting a threshold. So basically, if you want to go, if you want to come work here, let's say you want to come work here as a nurse, right? Basically, the minimum salary that you'll have to be on should be £30,000, right? So, if you're, if you're in Nigeria, you're watching me now, you're probably thinking, oh, of course, maybe when, when I apply, I'm sure there will be a job as a nurse or whatever for me, you know, at least the bare minimum of £30,000 for me to qualify. Now, watch this. Here is a basically a major complaint about NHS providers, Deputy Chief Executive Saffron Kodri told, uh, some journalists said, we are deeply concerned about what is going to happen. High skills do not equal high, um, high pay. Uh, you have got starting salaries. Now, within the NHS, at the time of filming this, starting salaries for nurses at £23,000 per year. Also for paramedics and midwives, £23,000. Junior doctors, doctors who have just freshly graduated, Starting salaries at £27,000. Healthcare assistants at £17,000 per year, all coming at way below that £30,000 cap. Now, it is not just health workers, it's social workers as well. We have to remember where the skills lay. These people are already complaining that how is this going to work? Do you see what I'm saying to you? I want you to go read this document. Let's go to students. International students enhance our educational institutions, both financially, of course, and culturally. Hmm. They enrich the experience of domestic students and they become important ambassadors for the United Kingdom in later life. Basically, what they're proposing to do in going forward is uh, we intend to improve the current offer to those who have completed a degree who want to stay on in the UK to work after they have completed their studies by offering six months post-study leave to master students and bachelor students studying at an institution with with degree awarding powers giving them more time to find permanent skilled work and to work temporarily during the, that period those who have completed a phd will have one year now we will also allow for students studying at bachelor's level or above to be able to apply to switch into the skilled workers route the skilled workers route that i just talked about up to three months before the end of their course in the uk and and from outside of the uk for two years after their graduation now check this check this right what they are saying in essence is if you've come here as an international student they're gonna give you six months post-study work visa that's a bloody joke after paying thousands into the system and i'll tell you the truth six months to after looking you know graduating and stuff it's very tricky the chances of you getting a job very slim some might get lucky if you have these exceptional skills or you fall into a category of the skills that they are really lacking say maybe you're an engineering student and there's a high demand you might be lucky but for the rest you don't stand a chance mate the six months post-study leave for master student and bachelor student is an absolute joke 
for you to pay thousands of pounds into the system to be given six months. Six months is a disgrace. And if you've come here to study PhD, you only get one year, right? Compared with Canada, US, uh, Republic of Ireland, and other parts of the world, right? And like I said to the other part, they said, oh, three months prior to the end of your student visa, you're allowed to be able to switch. But here is the thing. If you want to switch into that skilled worker's route, how are you as a graduate going to be able to get a job paying £30,000 per year? How? This is what I said in my previous video about the deliberate, the well-orchestrated filtering system. Because if you're coming, this is what I'm saying, read these documents for yourself, right? Because I'm doing my bit telling you, I'm going to put in the description, like I said, check the link. They are saying they want you, you, to basically come into the system. Oh yeah, of course, come and get a job and stuff. But as a £30,000 cap, the people heading the job sector, like the NHS and all the top directors are already lamenting. How is that going to work? Because the NHS, check this, the NHS is not going to magically increase the wages. Starting salary for nurses is 23,000. It might be a bit more for like places like London, just slightly more. And lastly, let me say this. I know everyone is banging on the fact that, oh, it's, it's, it's time for Africa to put our houses in order for, and, and stuff. What do you think? What do you propose? You have governments in Africa run by absolutely corrupt leaders that would go to any extent to obliterate anyone, jail you, kill you, to remain in power. These are the people siphoning the funds of the countries across Africa. Africa as a continent is actually on the dining table in front of all these EU countries, including America and the rest. They are knifing Africa, they are cutting into Africa. UK is involved, America is involved, these EU countries, China. They're coming into Africa, they're buying and taking our resources. How do you propose we fix Africa? It's your boy, Franklin. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace and love. Bye now.